Welcome everybody, Shabbat Shalom. This is the part that we share what we've heard and it's always a blessing to hear our rabbi. Um, I still listen to him every week and um, because I remember him saying, I've taught everything there is now, it's time for you to live it. And it's, you know, he always said that there are those who are who love to amass knowledge. They take notes, copious notes. They are gluttons for knowledge, but they do nothing. And it, one of the most important things for us to remember uh, from, from Korach is here was this man who he wanted something that was not given to him. And we have to be careful when we want what other people have. And it, but the bottom line always in a relationship with our God is, is trust. As Rabbi Shaul said, our, our emuna, our faith is a gift. God gives everybody the gift of faith. But what do we do with that faith? If we don't put it into action, if we don't live the commandments, if we don't do them, God, God is a God of action and he shows us that throughout history. He took us out of Egypt. He provided for us in the desert, constantly showing us that he was there with us night and day. And yet our fears and our anxieties stop us from seeing, like in, in Egypt, as they were going after we left Egypt and we we're in the desert, no matter how much meat we had, we still are crying for meat. We always want more and more because we don't stop to say, thank you, God, for what we have. So. Um, uh, you know, to be in a relationship with God is not having a sugar daddy. Being in a relationship with God is knowing that it's a two-way street. We have to do our part. He will do the miracles. We have to do the rest. And it's, you know, it's not easy. We're living in a world where, where we'd be tested to the nth degree and we have some good friends who are experiencing that right now. And every time I listen to and think of it, my heart is just breaking. But I know that somehow we have to go through this. And I don't always know why. Anyway, I'd like to hear your opinions, your talks, your thoughts. Yes, Holly. Peggy, just kind of adding to what you're saying. I really like how Rabbi Percy just called the spade a spade. And he called us out and said, when you're just looking for your ears to be tickled, it's idolatry because you're looking for somebody else to offer you salvation. And I really like that he just made it so clear. Yeah. And what you're saying too reminds me of your message from last week, because <clears throat> the part where you were saying, you know, we do have this fight flight response that's just biological, but we also have free will. Right. And the advice that I always hear you give Karina is, you have to stand strong and that's not easy. No. It involves us doing something, not just collecting all of this encouragement and trying to ride that out. And with my grief journey, I've seen that very much. Some days I have such a bad day. It's like, all I want is for somebody to give me some kind of word that I can live on, but that's never going to be sustainable. It no. has to be me trusting my creator for mm -hmm. my salvation, for my life, for continuing on that day or having hope for the rest of my life, whatever chunk I'm able to take on that day. Exactly. I know that one of the things that, you know, Karina is so nervous about is this course that she has to take. Yeah. And I remember when I was a little younger than her in my 40s and I had to start again I had to go back and learn and, and take an exam in mutual funds. I've never done anything in finance. I had no idea. And I took a look at this huge book and I didn't know what I was going to be able to do. But I was in my, the beginning of my journey to trust God. So I said, okay, let me get practical here. Now I know how, how much I have very little attention span. So I practically, I took the book. It was a, a big binder. And I started to read it and I said, okay, how many pages can I read practically with before I lose my sense of uh, my, my ability to concentrate? And I, I found it was 10 pages. 
So I saw the number in the book. I divided it by 10. Then I said, okay, how many days can I actually study? Because I was working full time. So, and I, I knew that I couldn't study every single day. Shabbat number one was out. I had to take care of my two kids. So I, I, I divided it up also among the days I can study. And then I gave it a deadline. Because if I don't have a deadline, it'll go on and on and on. And I said, okay, in three months is when I'm going to be able to take this course. And then I realized if in three months I saw that I, as I got closer, I wasn't going to be able to do it, I could postpone it. But that was my deadline. So I had to take practical steps. And one of the things that Rabbi Percy was constantly doing because in the religious world, and I'm including the new age world and all these religions, one of the things that they want you to do is be so spiritual that all practical things have no value. So he was constantly trying to bring me down to earth, take one step and put it in front of the other. God is with you. That's a given. And you always have to remember that. But God has given us a practicality on this earth. And if we get too lost, we're always looking for the sacred things, the mystical things. And we don't want to look at the practical because it's not glamorous. But that's what we need to do. And that's how we, we're going to watch how God reveals himself in our lives. That's when we're going to see his miracles in what we do. And then we, we pat ourselves on the back. and We say, look what I've done. But it's step by step. It's taken me years, years to learn this. Yes, Mauricio, I see you're, you're nodding your head because we know that that's reality. Yeah, you know, um, regarding the, the point uh, that, that the Torah is practical, it's um, people want to, to move the mountains, right? And make miracles. But the point is that we, we need to, be, it's better to start by saying good good morning at the, at, at the beginning of the day good night at the end that is is more is like a balance okay because the the, the misbot are really something practical very so and, and that's probably the point of Korach you know he wants to to be at the top but in the practical way, he was not, uh, 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 he didn't have the conditions, I would say, before God. But he to, thought, to, to, he thought, yeah, to, he, thought. He, he thought it was the top, but really the servant <clears throat> of the Lord is not at the top. He serves yeah. everybody else. He wants yeah, to be a dictator, but, not a true servant. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know, we were discussing about this because as Rabbi said, we don't know exactly if he was selling slaves at Egypt, right? Yeah. But that is, but at the end, I was thinking about this. When you are in a company, you are rushing all the days, looking for getting goals. <clears throat> and and then probably he, he in, in his mind, was saying like, oh, I can get all these people in three days to the promised land instead to have 40 days. And, and, and now that God has, tell, uh, has told us uh, that we will die at the, at the desert, so I have to hurry up. <clears throat> so that's probably the, the point of why he, he starts to, to think about himself. Why is Moshe? Moshe is not, is, we say in, in Spanish, is inepto. I don't know how is inept. Inept, yeah. So, uh, and, and that's the problem, okay. And but but there is something really interesting at the beginning of the of the portion. And I was reading in English, but in English is not the 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 the, the is not uh, expressed correctly at the beginning of the portion in in the verse sixteen one. It says in Hebrew, Bayigach, Bayigach, Bayikach, Bayigach. And, and, and that word means like, okay, if you have this finger and then you start to, 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 to pull it, to 
press, to pull, to pull until this disengage. Yeah. I don't know. If, this, yeah. Yeah. Disjoint. Disjointed. Disjoint. Yeah. Disjoint yeah. Breaks. Okay. And then you have your your finger there, and, and you have your hand here. Okay. Right. That is is the, is the meaning. So um, and, and and it's interesting because it says that at the beginning Korach, the Tan and Aviram, they disengage from the congregation of the Lord, and that is the problem. Right. Okay. Right. Because they don't want to be part anymore of this of the congregation right they want to so be above them to, to, to do this right and and, and, and you know and, and this is very sad because god has has called us to be a, a community and when we decide to 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 break this joint separate to separate ourselves okay and to be, live alone the problem is that the very same spirit of Korach come to us because then we are separate. What happens if, if if your finger is is not longer on your on your head? It's gonna head. die. It's gonna die mm -hmm. after four one week. I don't know. Then you you will see worms and probably um, in some years only only bones. Okay, so. That in, in that's exactly the problem. Okay, they decided to die at that moment when they did when when they wanted not to live longer as community. In 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 yes, there is no perfect community. No, and God put us in not perfect community because He wants that we grow. Exactly, and we grow by you know supporting each other, love each other. To be faithful one each other, mm. to help each other, and tell it. to tell the truth to each other. Yeah, I have a friend who told me that she has a friend who she just can't stand to be around anymore because of all the things that this this friend does. I said, "Well, can you tell her?" She says, "Oh no, I don't want to tell her." I said, "Then what kind of a friend is she or you?" She's an acquaintance because a friend. You can tell things to because they know that you want to help them grow. We have to learn, of course, how to tell them and when to tell them. And, and But we, if we don't tell each other the truth and we can say, I, this is what I see, the other person doesn't have to accept it. But at least we and we have to we with a true friend, a true friend is loyal. So they will know as the basis that the thing that I would never do was to hurt them. And once you accept that, then, because Rabbi Percy would do that all the time with me, he would tell me the truth about myself and I didn't always want to hear. And I would go away, but I would think about it because I always said, I have to keep an open ear and an open heart because others can see things about me that I cannot. And we have to hope that our friendships are good enough that we will be able to tell each other what we're seeing. And if we're wrong, accept that we're wrong about it because we don't have all the truth. Only God does. So, yeah, yeah and we cannot. That's what community is, not to separate ourselves and put ourselves above. You're right, Mauricio. So then you have three fingers, okay? Right. The tongue of Iram and, and Korach. Right. Three of them decided. The problem is that these three men were thinking that out of the body of the community, they will survive and they can produce something good. Right. And it's interesting that when you see the map of the camp, you have the quad in obviously it's close to the Mishkan because they, they were part of the of the service of the Lord. Right. So Korach was a, a, a server. Then they have a Reuben. So Reuben and Koat were together. Right. So it's like they, they start to say, hey, look yeah. what happened with Moshe. Yeah. Uh, he's not a good leader. And then they start to grow. And, and, and the Lashon Hara makes you to have this kind of envy. And you would and, think that they would have learned from what happened with Miriam and Aaron. 
because exactly yeah. the same thing happened. And now it, it spread. It was bigger. And then it went to 250 of the princes. Imagine yeah, and, how it grew. And, and, and not only that, they yeah. took their families. And the family. Except the, the, the woman of Korak, who, according to the Sayers, was very wise. And that's why is is in Michelet, regard is regarding to her the portion that says, oh, the, 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 the wise woman build the house. Okay. So it's regarding to the Korach uh, wife. And, and she took the, the, the kids. And then we read how the, 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 the kids of Korach write a, a, a very lovely psalms. Yes. Okay? Yes. In, in Chronicles, you, you can see. And then you, you have also uh, this, this Ishmael, okay? Yeah. yeah. Who is from, from Reuben. So uh, it, it's very interesting, you know, uh, because. Uh, uh, because uh, you know all, all, all this um uh, the problem of the envy is that it's like a cancer we were yes. saying that on 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 tuesday because uh, you are not satisfied only to to keep to yourself the envy you right. need to spread it i don't know it's well, like a kind of scene that that needs to 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 contaminate other people. <laughs> well, that's like, that's what the yeah. word that's what the word covet really means. Covet yeah. is bigger than being jealous. Coveting yeah. is you will do anything to that person, anything to get what they have, even if it's to kill them or to steal from them. All the other commandments. That's why that that's the culmination of the last of the commandments. And it's really sad, you know, because um, for example. When when people, it, it, I, I think it's more than in in, in U.S. You know, probably in Canada, because you know when when I see the movies, I I believe that they they are talking about what happened in your countries, but uh, it's like oh my 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 neighbor has a new machine, I need to have this machine. He has this new uh, car, I, I, and he get a, a Tesla. I need a Tesla, and it's like a, a, you know, it's like a competition about to have what the other have, and now that's why these countries are close to be broken. Okay. Yes. It's incredible the debt they have as country. And for example, U.S. debts like three times their 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 production, national production. Right. And they, 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 and they don't care. They, 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 they are keeping, uh, spending money, spending money every, every month, every year, and, and because they need to, to com make on consumption, and that is something like covet, yes. because you are not happy. If God gives you one thousand, then you are happy with one thousand, and look what can you do with one thousand. But right. do not try to live like getting one thousand per month and, 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 and live like you have four thousand. Right. That's in, in, in that in, in the system is very sad because that's why we have credit cards. Yes. People have to use credit card, credit and card, and it's credit so card. easy. They need to, yeah. to, to be to 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 show the the world we are we are good, we are in good position. Yeah. And now this thing has been increasing with the social media because they need to publish. I'm good. I'm at a restaurant. You know, it, it, it's incredible yeah. because yeah. Uh, sometimes I feel a little bit ashamed, honestly. When I say to, to, to Evelyn, hey, look, I don't know. Uh, for example, the, this couple knows every restaurant at San Salvador. And we eat every day at home. <laughs> and, and we eat because at home because we love to eat at home, really. That's good. I believe that, 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 that we, we can eat better at home than in a restaurant. I don't know how they prepare the, the food. Mm -hmm. But it's not about to, to be like, you know, um, uh, how do you say, tacaño? Um, 
proud about what you're uh, like no it's <laughs> not about not to spending money like you know like oh, cheap. Not, not to be cheap yeah, not to be cheap. It, 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 it's not about that. It's because yeah. we love. And and then but these people uh, start to say, oh, we went to this restaurant. And then we went to this restaurant. Yeah. And, and when we start to, to make numbers, just by they are saying to you, yeah. you say, oh, it, it, this math is, is not good. Probably he he's a, a drug seller or something like that because I cannot... <laughs> spending and probably I, I i i have more money than he and, yeah. and, and but but it's incredible wow. why because yeah. all all the system yeah. is is looking that we look to what the other person have and that we desire right what they have we we break the the commandment right not to covet your right. neighbor house your neighbor um car your neighbors right. whatever right. they have yeah, yeah. Well, what's uh so. yes mary what what's uh kind of interesting is that our the the general uh kind of belief or, or way of living of, of 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 so many societies including ours is that it's not who you are but what you do or what not what you do what you have and it's so deep in us you know, that we don't look at who we are. We don't bring, so many um, people have this idea that the more they get and the more they they um, acquire is, is, is who they are. And, and, you know, I know this is an obvious statement, but um, it's so deeply embedded in us. I see that in my own family. I see it with uh, one of my brothers. One of them is very successful. And it's in a good way. He's done a lot and he has a very beautiful heart. And my other brother struggles a lot and he's so deeply wounded and jealous by that. Instead of seeing the wonderful creative gifts that God has given him, like he's an incredible poet, a beautiful writer. And, and, and he tends to see, he doesn't think that that's such a great gift to have, especially as a man, you know, okay, so I'm a poet. But we're so deeply embedded in, in the way the world, um, you know, even commercials that you see, you know, all these sort of lifestyle commercials, that you, you don't even see the brand so much as the lifestyle. They're selling a lifestyle. That's the way commercials work. They're not selling, for example, only beer or food, even detergent. You see a whole lifestyle. It's almost like a little movie. Each commercial is a little movie and it's pushing the idea of, of, of what you have and, and the status you have. And um, also on another note, what I find interesting, everywhere I've worked, there have been always all sorts of um, jealousies and coveting of people's positions. Um, and sometimes you see somebody who almost usurps, like I've seen so many corrupt pr uh, principles in the school I used to work at, it's uncanny. And I remember once we got a, a principal that was so beautiful and would spend time to like work with special needs children. And this principal sometimes gave up his lunch hour and would go and sit with different individuals in the, in the school population. And some of the other people, the vice principal, et cetera, got so jealous that it was almost like a rebellious, a Korach rebellion. And they said, you know, he's, He's quiet, he's not doing anything. They named, they, they fabricated a bunch of things and got him fired. Oh. It was so terrible. He was such a beautiful principal, so engaging and so in love with the children. And he got fired because he didn't have the pizzazz and the, the showmanship of the other principals. Terrible. You see I that know. a lot. It's easy to get caught up in in everything, it, you know. You in a in a synagogue, and even in in ours, like someone would walk in and they have a lot of money. Immediately, they're offered a front row seat. You know, they they get the best seats in the house. Someone else comes in, a poor schlepper off the street, and you know they put him in the back. It's like we we judge everything by how well, we sell the seats. We Another sell. thing I find interesting, like we're talking about miracles, and and I agree that practicality is is more important than the you know 
emphasizing miracles, but obviously we have to have a balance and it's both. And more and more what I realize what a miracle is, is more what another person might not say it's a miracle. A miracle, like when I was going through the really hard time, uh, I had to, I knew I had to do something on earth. I had to force myself. It was very painful, but just to go out for at least 20 minutes. Uh, so that's the practical side. I knew that if I didn't do that, part of me knew that I might not, I don't know how, but I just knew maybe I'd end up, I don't know what, in the hospital or something. I said, I have to do this. So I fought, forced myself and I timed myself. And then slowly, little things would happen where I would feel, I don't know, God's presence in, in some little way, um, you know, that I could do more and more. And I would feel, and that was to me a miracle that how God was working in my life. It wasn't a big thing. I didn't see suddenly, uh, you know, I fell down and I felt the spirit of God. I felt something very beautiful and simple that God was giving me more joy in little things. And that to me is what a real meaning of miracle is, is the combination of what we do, our will, combined with God working with us. And I think it's, it's really special. These kind of things are, are very practical, but very special. And to me, they're miracles. It's, uh, it's the idea of, of, yes, of course, the very idea of relating to God in our lives. Yeah. Isn't that and, an ultimate miracle? The but it's also miracle. knowing exactly, but the, the, the God has already done so many miracles for us to rely on, for us to hold on to. We know what he can do. And, you know, the definition of a miracle is something that we cannot do. You know, when we get to the end of our rope and, you know, um, when like I remember when when I needed. Um, uh, remember when I bought those shares, I, I was offered by my boss to buy shares in the company we were working in. And I and I went and I asked for advice from many people because I didn't know what to do. And I was advised to do it. So I listened. And then I, but I didn't know that I would be fired from that job. And then, uh, but I, I went into debt to buy the shares uh, because I, I was told that the, the dividends that the, the shares would pay would, would um, always pay for themselves. Like I didn't have to pay for anything. So, but when I, I left the company, they called in the loan. And I didn't know what to do. And it was $150,000. It was just too big for me to be able to handle. And mm -hmm. that's when the miracle happened. That's when I saw, I just had to let it go because it was nothing I could do. And then we just happened to have someone who was attending our congregation who was a high level accountant. And she sat down with me and went through everything to help me to be able, I, I negotiated, she helped me negotiate with them. I lost in the process instead of 150,000, I lost over only, only 75,000 <laughs> from my RSPs, but I was able to, to do it. And then whew, it was lifted from me. That to me is a miracle because I couldn't have done it on my own. And he provided the person right at the time. Like when, when we were, when after the rabbi died and we had to set up a new constitution and Brenda just happened to become come to the congregation at that time. She was an expert in these things, and she helped. By the way, we need to pray for Brenda because she she's uh, in the hospital. She just had surgery on her on her hand, and I told her that we would be praying for her. So she's another one for for us to pray for. Let's keep the uh, the Villiers family. Let's keep Brian in prayer, and also uh, my daughter told me that a friend of hers in England just had a heart attack and um, she wants him to be prayed for. His name is Mark Lamb. So I'm going to add these people to the prayer list. You know, and if I... you could also add my friend, Christine. Anyway, yes. uh, she's going through. An... What's her last name? Uh, Cadovius, C-A-D-O-V-I-U-S. A good Roman Latin name. Cadovius. Okay. So, you know, when I put the names in the in the bulletin for prayer, 
just when I send out the bulletin, just take a quick glance. The ones that what that I do that really need immediate hard praying for is are the ones that I put in bold red. And then when God starts to answer our prayer, I'll bring them to bold black and then just to regular uh, after a while. And if you notice, if you look at them and you say, oh, I've put their name down, but they're OK now, we can take them out. Just let me know so I can remove them from the list and then we'll have room to add other people. I'm, I'm grateful for Mildred, who's home, and she, I printed out a prayer list for her and she sits and she's she's praying for people. You know, God has given us that gift of being able to to go directly to his throne and ask for mm -hmm. intervention. And and when we see prayers answered, it's just absolutely complete joyful. So um, uh, I would like also that you that we can pray for for family Trejo, T-R-E-J-O, Trejo. OK, uh, she she is. Um, a, a, a woman um, who who lives in Washington. Uh, she has two daughters. In like uh, one week ago, at night the the house started to burn. Oh, and completely, they lost everything. When and I mean, they don't know what started they, it. No, they don't know. They were sleeping, and then oh. the neighbor just knocked the door, and he take that the door down and took her out. Wow! Um, she is Jewish. She is uh, married with a uh, 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 is uh, the uh, sister in in law of of Evelyn. So, in, in, in but they lost everything: shoes, wow. blankets, everything. I mean all the house is is like wiped out so um obviously right now they are living with with uh, evelyn's brother uh, but you know it, it's that the girls cannot sleep at this moment because they are afraid about another fire okay. <gasps> Uh, wow. girls are 15 years old and 12 and 10 years old oh my goodness losing everything wow that's yeah. hard so it's very hard for them wow so when I, I when we just know you know i've been thinking about them uh this week all this week uh because it is very sad i mean it, it, I don't know how, what, what to do when you lose everything. So yeah. uh, keep them in prayer. Yes. I, um, um, and and I, I met her uh, when, when we were to, to, to U.S. last year. But, but you know, uh, I don't know the whole family, but it's, it's really sad. Wow. Yeah, we'll keep them in prayer. We, we'll pray for Angel, too, because he's leaving. He's going to go to Spain for three weeks. Oh. When are you leaving? In the second week La of Madre Patria, and <laughs> uh, um, halfway of uh, July. Okay. Yeah. So, so next next week yeah. I'll I'll have you read Angel for the, the Torah portion for next week because the following week you'll be you'll be leaving. Yes. About this uh, family uh, um, um, that had this problem, uh, do they have? Uh, did they have an insurance or something? Uh, that they can yes, they have an insurance, but but they said okay. that you, it takes a lot of time. Tell yes. them to open a, a GoFundMe account, and we, as a congregation, we could just help help them to send some money that they will, uh, you know, for uh, just for now to acquire uh, the basic needs, you know. So we could just give them a, a, a okay. help, and the congregation we probably can talk all the members. I mean, the board and and decide how much money okay. we can to help. Okay, Brian. Yes, Brian. Angel, is he going alone or is the whole family is going? Oh, I'm going by myself. Oh. Because, uh, yeah, because, uh, man, you cannot afford right now. It's just the prices of, of flight tickets that went, you know, almost twice, uh, 50%. Yeah, and everything. It's, it's crazy, no? Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I just wanted to go because uh, my parents, I have not seen them for a while. and. I want to spend time with them you know they're getting old and yeah uh, oh, that's and good i wanted to talk about uh, this parasha too i, I have some uh, interesting well my my thing that i, I focus at uh, listening the rabbi when he talks about leadership 
that what true leadership is, you know, we we sometimes we understand uh, because we were taught this way, you know, like, oh, yeah, to be a good leader, you have to, you know, uh, well, there are people that they are, you know, in elevated uh, positions in society. And that uh, makes them uh, uh, believe, which it actually is, they deceive themselves by believing that that only that, uh, because you come from a good family, you know, that you already have the right to be a good leader, you know, and uh, that probably could be part of the problem with Korach, I guess. Uh, but they forget about the most important thing, right? Which is not based about anything about physicality, anything, not your DNA, you know, uh, it doesn't have nothing to do with uh, about, you know, the social status or, or it is true that you acquire some knowledge when you're in high levels, you know, society and you have high levels of study and that it, it helps a little bit when you have to do certain things because you have certain knowledge acquired. But when the true, really, really true leadership is based not on human, on position, knowledge, but it's based more on nearness, connection, relationship, harmony, and kindship with the creator and the spirit, Ruach. Now, and this uh, comes from uh, the soul state of this individual, which it expresses and reflects the presence and essence of our creator, of uh, which is spirit, which is knowledge, which is life, which is love. Now, so uh, as I said, it doesn't have nothing to do with physicality, with your DNA, with your uh, family position, your right, your inheritance, uh, no, nothing. As we see that how the creator who sees at that level of every single individual soul and measures the hearts of everyone and knows the hearts of everyone, he decided to choose Aharon because he was the most, uh, you know, he was very, very uh, uh, there, you know, to do everything that, that, you know, that they were supposed to do, you know, very, uh, now, uh, uh, for example, like Moshe, Moshe, for example, that he said uh, he was a humble man. He was there to carry all this. So now, now I'll give you more examples. I'll give you the example of David's strength. Uh, for example, it wasn't David's, David's strength, okay, that was required to take down a giant. But the quality of the spirit, which is faith, he had needed to have this faith, you know. This faith, it's not provided by any of, uh, in that ca in case, uh, what was the kid? Shaul. Shaul that was there equipped, it was not based on physicality, on his armor, on his ability. Probably Shaul was a really good warrior to fight the, the giant. No, it's, uh, uh, but but it, it was not required. It, in that moment, was required a quality of spirit. And when we act and do things, based on that we will always succeed, succeed or will we always uh, triumph against any obstacle will we always go through any difficulties because we are doing it in seek perfect harmony and, and, and unity with the creator now that shows and that uh, that can tell us that already every politician that was in nowadays all the manipulations and all the stuff that they're doing that doesn't go according to the creator. They still get the chance to do all this, but it won't last, it won't last because there will be always someone who will take over doing the same probably thing. And, you know, it will be always a keep look, uh, keep thing uh, doing and doing by other person, other entity, other uh, individual. And we will say the same now. It wasn't also Joseph, uh, Joseph's intelligence that saved Israel and Egypt from starvation, from death, but it was his love for life and preserving it. That is another uh, uh, quality of spirit, the love of for life, you know, that despite all the years that he was in prison, deprived of his freedom, despite of what the brothers did to his life, and despite of all these uh, 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 negative things that he suffered and went through, at the end, he was put in charge to preserve the life, not only of the entire Israel, uh, uh, Jacob and family, but also the Egyptians that they were suffering also. And all the nations that surrounded 
uh, Egypt that they were, you know, uh, they were, uh, you know, starving, starving, you know, because it was like a food. So Thank now we, that we need to focus on that. And that, that's, that is the main, uh, uh, if we look at leadership like this, we lead these qualities, God perfectly sees it. Now, the problem is our leadership, can we as our members can see these qualities in our men? Well, we need to focus on that. We don't have to focus on making, uh, 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 creating all this uh, synagogue, uh, not synagogue, uh, yeshivas, which say, uh, you know, that, that they, true, they, they teach some knowledge, like in history and all this, you know, uh, important. There's some things that are important, not everything, because, you know, in religion, no everything is good. There are some good uh, parts that they actually reflect qualities of the spirit. But when we talk uh, about, uh, um, I mean, I just... Yeah, I'll jump over. Thank you. Me. Thank you, Angel. I know. Yeah, Sometimes you, you get if we focus more get carried on, away. You don't know where to, where you're going. And, <laughs> seeing, oh, you and, yeah. and seeing truly things about, you know, focusing that con, uh, uh, qualities of, of yes. The, Amen. Okay. No yes, basic of how much you know. The, Thank you. I'm, I'm, I totally agree with you, Angel, because. Uh, you know, the, the, this thing is like, how is the spirit of, of the leaderships? When, uh, regarding how the leaders are, all the people will be like that, okay? It's like the parents. Why this guy is, is so funny? Because probably his father is very funny, very very happy. You know, this, all, all of this, you, you can transmit. Uh, but, but there is just only one thing because... I just forgot to say that when Miriam was talking, it came to my mind um, that uh, what was the, remember that after the problem of Korah, okay, all the people went to, to Moshe and start to, to reclaim him. Hey, you kill these people. Right. And regarding to, to what the Torah is saying, <laughs> They decide to disengage. Yes. Okay. So it's not true. No. Okay. But the very same spirit of these 250 person and, and these three leaders and their families, they goes to 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 the to all the people, and then they went to to motion. And what God did? Oh, I'm gonna destroy them. Okay. Right. And he sent a, a plague. And, 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 and start to, to, to die. At the end, the problem of one person, Cobbett, kills really 14,250 right. persons. Right. So it's, it, 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 the, the problem of one is, you know, is multiplied. And, 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 and then what was the, the, the vaccine that God sent to, to all these persons? was Aaron. It says that he was among the live and the dead, okay, at that at the moment. And I was thinking about why, why, why? And this week I was thinking about this question, what that, what that really doesn't mean. And today that when Miriam was talking about her, her brothers, it came to my mind, Aaron, the characteristics of Aaron. He was the one, yeah, he, oh, 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 Korach disengaged, but Aaron engaged people. He was like, a, regarding to, to what a rabbi taught us, is he, he was like a glue of the persons. He started to, to unit person, you know, and, and how are you doing? Why are you are crying? And what happened to you? You know, all this, of this ability, and, 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 and this is at the end the cure for the COVID to the envy to, to learn how to live again together. And, 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 and this is just to, to be practical. Yeah. And, and, and that is some, the only one thing I, I wanted to add. Well, we, we see the same thing that Yeshua did. When he gave the Sermon on the Mount, he was standing in the gap for the people. Aaron stood in the gap and the plague was stopped. But Aaron didn't die to save the people. 
No, and that's what they did to Yeshua. They made him die to save the people, which never happened. It's nowhere in the Torah. So anyway, we'll end here if, and we'll say um, thank you. I say thank you to everybody for your participation. Have a, a, a blessed rest of Shabbat. And I see Sari's here, but her she didn't put her picture on. I, I think she's in the United States right now, no? She's with her cousin. Uh, I thought that's what Yannette said. I'm not sure. Um, no, you don't know. Me, me neither. I'm not sure. Anyway, I hope she's doing well and that God will provide for all her needs as well. Please keep, keep, let's keep each other in prayer. And we'll see you, God willing, uh, next week when we look at the double portion. Um, and I think it's, uh, whose turn is it? Mauricio, is it your turn next week? I think so. Okay. So I'll send out uh, the list of who's going to be speaking uh, for the month. And God bless you all. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for attending our Shabbat service. And we will see you, God willing, next week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.